aircraft you see on screen is different in one very big way. The wings are round. More specifically, the wings form a circle all the way around the fuselage, a closed wing, or more accurately, a ring wing around the plane. This innovation, while at first looks like an AI-generated plane, is actually a design that is far more fuel efficient, generates more lift, and was almost the future of aircraft design. But the ring wing commercial plane would be buried and never see the light of day. What would this ring wing plane be like to fly? Why did we never build it? And what ever happened to the concept completely? Join us today to discover what goes around comes around in the world of wacky aviation. Like posters, merch, and supporting a channel and creator who has made weekly videos for you for years? That's right, the Fountain Explained merch store is open, and I've tried really hard to come up with legit cool stuff for aviation fans. So check it out and let me know what you think. Link it below. Our story of the Ring Wing aircraft has its roots at the dawn of aviation. Not the Nazis this time, of course, for those watching the channel for a while, but actually the French. An early example of the closed wing was on the Bell Riot 3 aircraft built by Louis Berret and Gabriel Wilson. The lifting surfaces comprised of two annual wings mounted in tandem, and the later version replaced the forward annual wing with a biplane and added a canard foreplane to make it a three service aircraft. It was able to leave the ground in small hops before being damaged beyond repair. But that leads us to the future with our hero of the story, Lockheed. Advancements in the ring wing concept, especially the French VTOL fighter aircraft after World War II, made Lockheed wonder if this concept could also be used for future fighter jets. But then they thought, why not make it a little bigger? It's the 1980s and Lockheed needs a new aircraft to beat back MD and Boeing for the trophy of the world's best commercial aircraft builder. So enter in our aerospace engineer star, Rollo Smithers. You might have actually heard of him before as he's the brainchild of the Lockheed flatbed aircraft that we've already covered on the channel. So you know that this concept is just as wacky. But it's this ring wing commercial monster that he came up with that's the focus of today's video. And boy, it is one of the most fantastical aircraft I've ever had the pleasure of showing. There's a lot of strange phenomena out there in the sky, not just this crazy ring plane. Everything from flying spy balloons to Tic Tac UFOs that the Navy can't track down, to even strange giant flying objects over cities that we can't explain. But they all have one thing in common. Aliens. Specifically, smooth-skinned grey aliens that have youthful faces to die for. A secret, like their anti-gravity technology, that they keep to themselves. Well, that is, until now. Foreo has come up with a device called the UFO2, which is an at-home supercharged facial machine that's a great gift for you or your significant other. I know that we all love planes here, but sometimes our partners love something else a little bit more, like having perfect skin. And that's why the Spire Experience at Home, Foreo UFO2, is the perfect gift. Foyo is a Swedish beauty tech company like the Apple of the spa world with a bunch of innovative products. But the UFO2 is the best. It uses a combination of cutting edge technologies like LED light therapy and thermotherapy to deliver a deep skincare experience. It reduces the sides of aging and hydrates the skin, giving you a healthy glow. Perfect for me when I've had too much sun at the beach. Oh, and it works for everyone, no matter the skin condition. That's just smart. So yeah, I don't normally recommend products outside of the world of aviation, but for our significant others out there who put up with our obsession, I do recommend the UFO too. And when you click that link down in the description, you'll also be supporting the channel. With the title of the Ring Wing Lockheed Commercial Transport, it would be 52 meters long with a wing 
a circumference of 7.4 meters. The wing itself would be a low mid-length attachment before arching backwards 27 degrees to attach itself to the tail of the aircraft. The overall height is substantial, reaching up to 23 meters, meaning it wouldn't really fit in typical hangars for say the 737. And with the blueprints, you can see just how low the actual fuselage is compared to the wing. There are two control surfaces along the tail to control the direction of travel thanks to no flaps on the ring wing itself. On board it would mimic the configuration of the Airbus A320 or the 737, carrying around 120 passengers in a 3-3 short haul configuration, making it perfect for short haul routes. Because of the few efficiencies of the design, it would be perfect for those commuter destinations that don't really reach high altitudes, such as New York to Boston, London to Manchester, or my personal favourite, Sydney to Melbourne. This concept reaches far as some media testing, like the article you can see here, and initial discussions with airlines. Naturally, these were just part of Lockheed's portfolio of innovative future ideas to make it seem like their stock standard designs were more futuristic. Now, I can't say for sure if any airlines ever really considered the ring wing concept, but you know that it definitely got a buzz. And alas, this concept never really went further than wind tunnel tests. Now I should mention that Belarus got this concept working on a small crop duster aircraft, and it's none than less impressive. A few prototypes flew, but funding was eventually pulled by Russia and the project was abandoned. There is also another type of aircraft similar to this called the box wing, not a ring wing, and that is a whole nother video, because even Boeing is building a prototype one. If you want to see that, write in the comments and don't forget to click subscribe so you don't miss it. So I'm guessing at this point of the video you're wondering, gee Nick, this looks wacky, but would the ring wing actually fly? Well, let's dive into how ring wings work and you'll finally understand why we don't have this beast today. A closed wing system, where the wing loops around the horizontal axes and reconnects to the fuselage of the aircraft, has several major advantages. Because the plane doesn't have actual wingtips, that means wingtip vortices and the downwash of the wing that they cause are nearly eliminated, and the wing can generate more lift, meaning shorter runways, less fuel, and no impact on cross winds. A triple win. Well, kinda. While Rollo was imaginative for sure, he was a little bit more loose on the physics of aviation. While a joined wing aircraft provides significant induced drag and structural advantages, they also suffer from increased parasitic drag and require careful design to avoid issues like flutter and boundary layer separation. Essentially in layman's terms, the fuel saved from the increased lift is cancelled out by the increased drag. Now this is something that is not a apparently obvious when you're using wind tunnel tests, because a lot of the time the wings used on these planes have an infinite aspect ratio, exactly the same as a circular ring wing, something that they quickly discovered in the 1980s. We also have to mention that the weight of having a whole nother wing on top, essentially like a biplane, just adds to the weight of the aircraft and then you still need more fuel. In addition, there is also something called a wing twist. You might notice that on modern planes, the wing isn't flat, but rather twists away slightly from the fuselage. Specifically, a twist to the wing where the onboard position is at a higher angle of attack than the outboard. This means that your onboard will stall before for your outboard, which has the control surfaces, and thus you can recover from a stall. Such a system wouldn't work on a ring wing plane. The benefits of this design outweigh the drawbacks only if the aircraft is well optimized for the mission, such as short runways or heavy cross winds. But that's not all, we also have to talk about money. Designing a joined wing aircraft requires strong interaction between different disciplines such as structures and aerodynamics. This makes it difficult for the normal team of engineering specialists to optimize the design. Additionally, this type of design is not well understood or mature as conventional planes, which makes it more expensive to achieve all of those potential benefits. 
Therefore, an established manufacturer may choose to stick with what they know and what the customer is willing to expect instead of designing some crazy new concept. In summary, there's a reason why we abandoned biplay designs. Just like the ring wing, it's not the most efficient. But that didn't stop Rollo Smethers, Lockheed visionary and aviation pioneer from imagining the impossible. He would unfortunately be taken from us much too young due to cancer and would never realize many of his designs. And I thought, why not dedicate this video to him and the many other forgotten builders of a future that we could have had. This one is for you, Rolo. Thanks for watching.